We're catching something. This is the worst thing that could have happened. So one of my ropes came off the cleat. I must have been sitting here bumping it. We see one mooring ball. It could be because it's broken and that's why no one took it. Yeah, we're gonna have to quit YouTube now, guys. What's up guys? Welcome back to Sailing GBU. We are waking up early. This is pretty early for us. It's probably 9 a.m. and we're ready to go for once to go sailing. We are going to Culebra. We are probably going to do some fishing and we have to get a boring ball when we get there. There's this cool anchorage called, what is it called? Dackety? Dackety. And hopefully there's a boring ball for us. I always get nervous thinking that they're going to all be taken. Not like you can't just go somewhere else and anchor, but... <laughs> I'm nervous. Yep, we're, we're to, that's part of the adventure, as we say around here. Though we might have to fight someone to get them off their morning ball and say we need it. No, no. something's gonna happen. But let's get going because we got up early for a reason. We wanted the water to be a little bit more calm, hopefully for bear. And let's go. Let's do it. Basically, we're having to dodge the bing bongs, a bunch of fish traps. Um, the bing bongs. And it's hard right now because the sun's coming up, so I'm looking right into like the sun reflecting off the ocean, which isn't ideal for having to see them. So you don't get to see them until they're right up on you. But you know what? People got to make a living, so I can't hate on them too much. They're making their living putting them down. I'm making my living dodging them. So we're just two sides of the same coin, I guess. So one of my ropes came off the cleat. I must have been sitting here bumping it. And that's why you always have two lines on the dinghy because one can come off quite simply. So I've slowed us down. Let me try to get her in now. Came out. She was laying in the bee berth, but now she's out. 
uh, we'll see how she does. Real quick to interrupt our sale, we'd like to talk about today's video sponsor, Babbel. We first introduced you to this app a few months ago and we've still been loving it and it's been really useful as we've been living and traveling around Puerto Rico. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. Babbel uses real world conversations to prepare you for travel, business, personal relationships, and more. If you're planning on traveling like we are, this is one of the best tools you can invest your time in and start learning a new language in as little as three weeks. You get to speak back and forth with your device. You get to hear it said and then you get to do your best to enunciate. El jugo de naranja. El jugo de naranja. Got it. And my personal favorite? La cerveza. La cerveza. The reason this comes in really important is it lets you practice without the stress, the real life stress of having people talking back and forth with you. I kind of ran into this problem at McDonald's here. I kept saying McCombo, like McCombo, because I tried to use my accent and they kept thinking that I was saying jamón. So for them, when I would say McCombo, it was turning into con jamón. And I was getting all my sandwiches with extra ham on them and I would drive away from the drive-thru like, oh, what the heck, they keep getting my order wrong. But then eventually they did ask me like, are you asking for more ham? To get 60% off your subscription, hit the link down below. There's no risk to try as Babbel offers a 20 day money back guarantee. So now we're sailing, motor's off, time to put out the fishing line. Give me that big old barracuda. Don't say that. All right, so I had a bunch of water in the back of the dinghy. I'm basically testing the capabilities of how well I can tow it with the motor. And it was doing really well. I think on the south side with all the splashing from all the different waves we were punching through, a decent amount, maybe five, six gallons, had gotten of water into the dinghy, which was making it pitch a little bit more. And it was putting uh, a lot of pressure on the painters and also obviously trying to dip my motor a little bit further down the water. So I had to jump in there, bail that out real quick. But all I did was set my autopilot tight to the wind so that it just kept luffing and it was easy breezy. Your line, your line! We're catching something! We're catching something! This is the worst thing that could have happened. Why? I have soap all over my hands because I wanted to watch that fish crap off. Oh no! Oh no! Do you need help? I don't know, I think it might have let go. Or it's very small. Is it a barracuda or something better? It's a barracuda. No! Sacagawea! gonna send them off okay send them off all right guys so we're slowly pulling up to Culebra and it is the weekend and it looks pretty packed in our little anchorage where the morning balls are we're not sure if there's gonna be one it looks like a whole bunch of cool sport fishers did one of those things what is it called Matt raft up raft up together so there's a lot of boats in there but We'll see. We're gonna head in. Are we motoring in or are you sailing in? Uh, I'll motor through the channel just because we have to grab a morning ball anyway, so I think motoring is still gonna be the way to go, but 
I'm just gonna sail past these couple little reefs. All right, we're flying in, people. We didn't catch any fish. Caught that barracuda. Well, we caught the barracuda. Caught that little dirty, slimy cooter. <laughs> cooter. connected all right so there's at least 50 boats out here and everybody skipped on this old mooring so it makes me think that it's a janky a janky piece of the uh, painters were ripped gangster up. rope yeah the painters were all messed up so I'm gonna jump in dive down there see what I'm dealing with because I feel I can put my anchor like 20 feet that way just as easily and have a I trust my anchor more than I trust any mooring was good when checked that bad boy out worked really good was safe all night we had a really good night's sleep but now there's a reef out here in front which makes it nice but there's a few small cuts in that reef which make for really really good snorkeling so i want to go check that out see if we can see some squids see if we can see some animals and you know let's just go check it out
All right, guys, we're back from that snorkel. We love that snorkel. We even call those big porcupine fish our puppies. They live there. We know every time when we go there, we can see them. But it is time to go get some food. This anchorage is awesome because maybe you've seen our previous videos. It's kind of built for cruisers. They have a lot of spots. You can just pull your dinghy right up and they have dinghy docks. The restaurant is literally called dinghy docks. So we are going to head over there, get some food, go into town and just see what we can get into. when you come to Quilaber you have to visit Hector the protector. He points over there at something and then he's supposed to get mad and keep all the storms away I think is what, what he's supposed to do. So he's a cool guy. We come and see him every time we're here. Right, guys we made it back to the boat and it's it's nighttime now normally we're done filming we put the camera away and we start relaxing at this point but today we decided to show you a little bit of what it looks like to be living on our boat at nighttime some things that we do when it becomes nighttime and just our I guess People call it the nighttime routine. Yeah, some things you can expect if you're going to plan on living on a boat one day. Let's get into it because I hear the mosquitoes, they're coming. <laughs> they're coming for us. All right, so around dusk and sometimes dawn, sometimes all night, depending on your anchorage and how close you anchor to land, the bugs will come in. And we pretty much live outside on a boat, so around that certain time i'm i get bit no matter where i am the mosquitoes will find me miles and miles away so i'm pretty hardcore on this and you don't want to be hot so i shut a few of our hatches like our main one this one i shut real quick i got one in the bathroom that i shut
And then for the V-Birth, I like to keep the wind blowing in. You don't want to shut everything and be hot. So I have a special tool for that. I did buy this off of Amazon. It's pretty expensive. I have it on my Amazon storefront. You can check in the links down below. I have some of my favorite boat stuff, some of Matt's favorite boat stuff on there. So check that out if you're interested. But it is a net that you can put over an open hatch. It's pretty big. So this one fits perfectly over my thing. You can go on the outside of your boat and put it over your hatch to make sure mosquitoes don't come in. This is also good enough for no seams not to come in because no seams will come in too and eat your buns alive. So I go in from the inside because I have a shaded tarp thing on top of my hatch right now. So this is how I do it. So basically it's just a really fine screen and sewn in around the edges is like a weight. So you can slide it on and then the weights hold it on and hold it down to make sure the mesquites don't come in. And ta-da, but there's one more step, you gotta shut your front door. Then you can shut these screens that Matt magically made me. And now, no bugs can get at in. All right, so a lot of the times Kristen's finishing up her work as the night's going on. She's finishing up on the laptop. And at this time, I take over to make sure that we're going to be safe throughout the night and make sure that nothing bad's going to happen to us. All right, so depending on how high of a traffic area we are in and if we're in like a party anchorage or if it's the weekend, a lot of cars and not cars, boats are going by. <laughs> I have a couple different lights that I set out. I set one all the way out on the stern so they can see me and I'll light up the cockpit with another light that I made. We'll get to that later. That's just so everyone can see me very well. You know, people might be knocking back their bases and I don't want to get crashed into. Second thing I do is make sure that the dinghy is tied up properly. Um, I put two lines on it and then I also lock it as the night goes. We don't want the dinghy to end up going somewhere else. I don't lock it so much for the safety of thieves or anything like that. I lock it up just because it's a mechanical uh, painter that holds it on. And if this thing were to, if like let's say my painter were to cut loose, this would rattle around. If this were trying to break loose and it would wake me up and I would come out and save the dinger. So that's the uh, thing I do when I'm getting ready to go to make sure we still got a dinghy when we get up in the morning. So once the dinghy's locked up outside, the next thing I do is I check all the weather. I try to get like a weather assessment of what the evening's going to be like. This is important when you're at an anchorage so that you know like where the boats are around you, what they're gonna be going through all night. It lets you know kind of where you could end up if you know your anchor's moving around or your chain, if your chain pops loose or something crazy goes like that. It just lets you know like what kind of night you're gonna be in for and also the hatches, whether they could stay open a little bit more or whether they're gonna rain and we should just close them up and be on the fans and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll check the weather radar for whatever country or city or town I'm in and then I'll zoom way out to see like what storms I can kind of guess are gonna develop and come a little bit later and you get pretty good at it over the years. Then I'll check the wind um, for the intensity and the direction, see what kind of shifting of winds is gonna happen. You know, we're parked behind a reef here which protects us to the east but if we we're going to go pretty north or hard to the north, it would be something that I would have to be concerned with a little bit more. So I like to make sure that that's not going to happen. And then I will make a GPS marker on my uh, Navionics and that kind of shows where you are. That's something that's a little more important with the anchor um, because you want to know if your anchor's moving or any, something like that's happening. When we're on a mooring like we are now, it's not as important. Um, you're going to hear it if the mooring snaps. So uh, that's basically things I do for the safety so that we can sleep with peace of mind at night and I think most cruisers probably do something very similar. All right, so the next thing we do when nighttime hits, because we're no longer getting any solar and we're a fully solar running boat, except for the small generator that we have, we have to unplug all of our electronics. I'm obviously obsessed with making ice now that we are making like 40 amps an hour with the big boy solar panels. So I have my sweet ice maker here. He's cool, he's cousin. But if you know, you know and uh, sometimes you get to talking. But yeah, I gotta run over here as soon as it gets dark, make sure everything is unplugged. 
Um, I do that at about dusk or basically whenever I remember because there's sometimes at night that I've left the ice maker running all night and we've left like a laptop charging and I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, where'd all my precious amps go? So it's uh, that's the next thing we do. We turn off all of our electronics. So once we know we're gonna be safe at the anchorage and we know nothing wild's gonna happen, no bad storms, then we can pop off on some drinks. I'm done with my work. He's done with making sure everything's not gonna kill us and our anchor's safe and... I do do. And I do trust him, guys, because Matt is actually very strict on making sure that we're safe at night, else he can't sleep. Safety first. If the rig <laughs> is in jeopardy, your life is in jeopardy. Um, I made a promise to that dolphin that I was gonna let this boat <laughs> ride forever, and I'll never break that promise. But yeah, I mean, obviously at nighttime, Safety is important. Things can change quickly, and you know, if the boat's not staying put, it can be somewhere pretty far away in an hour or so. So, what are we drinking? There's the crane. That's all we got. Right? Unless you want Margs. We couldn't find rum at the stove. Okay, that's fine. Do it. Pull them up. That's what we got. Yes, we don't put keep our cranberry juice in the fridge. If you leave the cranberry juice out long enough, it actually turns into cranberry wine. Toilet bowl hoot. You can make out of this in a pan. Bear has her own nighttime routine as well. She's completely spoiled. She's like the most spoiled cat on the seven seas for sure. Maybe even on earth and on land. And I want to give her a sweet snuggle. She hates this, but... I own her. She belongs to me, so I give her a little bit of this. Sweet, sweet. Does she look like she likes it? No, it looks like you're fattening her up. Yeah, I'm fattening her up because she gets her wet food first thing at night, and that's basically turned into her appetizers now. She gets her gravies at like right around sundown. She starts like screaming and yelling and meowing at me, and she will not be quiet until she gets it. And then later, about an hour or two after she eats the gravies off of the meat, and then we have to throw that stuff away, she uh, meows more and then she wants like 20 or 30 little pieces of crunchies and then she's satisfied. So Bear <laughs> has her nighttime routine as well. All right, so one of the next nighttime routines, and I've been loving this, this came with the new boat. And this is kind of a new development, as some people would say. Um, it didn't come with the new boat. You made it. It didn't come with the new boat. A, a guy that uh, was familiar with the channel, he said, like, the channel, he stopped by the boat one day back when I was in Fajardo during the refit, and he gave me these lights. And he said, here's an underwater light. I got some spares. You know, take them. Have a, have a good time with them. So uh, I didn't want to cut a hole in the bottom of my boat and put this uh, waterproof light in it. So I just found a piece of conduit and I melted it and I shoved the light in the end so that it's watertight so that where I splice the wires together right here doesn't get any water on it. And I can hang this over the side and dip it in the water and it has some color changing sequences. And when I put this in the water, I'm telling you, big, big tarpons, my sabados, they come to the boat and they swim around. Shrimps, we've seen squids with this bad boy. I mean, I think that when we get to the really cool like clear water anchorages, this is gonna be Pretty fun. I've been loving this thing. All right, guys, and now we just do what everyone else does. Lay in bed and we watch Netflix. We pet our cat. Matt sends me a hundred reels on Instagram that I never watch. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's basically our night. So Hope you guys enjoyed our video. We sailed to Culebra and we're feeling good. This is a really nice anchorage here. We love it here with the thingy docks and all the places you can go to. And behind the reef, it's like having an air conditioner because the wind blows in the trade winds and there's no land to block it. So it actually gets quite cold. You can use a blanket at this anchorage this time of year. She's been saying she's freezing, snorkeling. She said, I can't even get in this water. My core temperature's down. I'm a baby, though, when it comes to being... I get cold in, like, 80 degrees. Yeah, she's this big, soft sissy, but... I hope you guys enjoyed the video, checking into our lives and seeing how we get down out here on the boat and seeing how everything goes, and... I'm sorry, I don't want to apologize to everyone for the boringness, because everything just goes too perfect now. When you work on the boat and you build your yeah, dreams... Yeah, we're gonna have to quit YouTube now, guys. Our boat's just going too well. 
It's like I just keep waiting for things to break. So I guess come back in like a year or so and see if things start breaking from then. But I hate to pray for my downfall here, but you know the views do a lot better when everything's broken and you're having to build everything. So might be a, might, might have to go back to a feeding. Yeah, guys, make sure you hit stuff. thumbs up on this video. <laughs> But thanks for watching. This is probably one of the only outros we're going to be doing laying in our bed. <laughs> Have we ever done an outro laying in our bed? I don't know. Bear's confused about it. Bear's but... like, what's? why are they talking? <laughs> why won't they shut up? But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you check out our Patreon if you want to see any real-time updates. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.